is up guys my name is the Steve Sane and today we're gonna to be talking about M1 Max and we're gonna be answering some crucial questions that people have had or the most common questions that I've encountered at least number one we're gonna be looking at which one of these Macs should you get number two we're gonna be looking at if there is any point in getting one right now because we all know pro models are just around the corner Apple did say in two years they're gonna roll out the M1 chips to the entire product line so I'm sure they're gonna do something slightly different like an M1 X or or M12. Uh, sorry, wait, that would just be M2. Never mind. And number three, if you have an Intel Mac already, does it make any sense for you to upgrade right now? Or should you sell that thing ASAP? We're gonna look at all of that and more in this video. Let's go. So I've had the pleasure of using all three of these Macs over the last week or so. I've been using them extensively for all sorts of productive and leisure applications, such as video editing, photo editing, and even some gaming. In fact, I've been editing Sony A7S III footage in H.265, 4K, 24, 60, and 120 frames per second in high quality mode in Final Cut Pro, as well as doing all of this while connected to a 5K ultra wide monitor. And all of this on, wait for it, the MacBook Air, like the base MacBook Air. Now, I recently dropped a video on comparing the base MacBook Air, the one I'm talking about, to my tricked out, maxed out almost 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro with the Intel chip. And I do this entire comparison and I talk about my thoughts on it. So I'm gonna link that video somewhere up here. So check that out. Okay, so we know that this new generation of Macs are killer. Like Apple has basically like harvested alien technology and injected it into their already familiar max but which one should you get and for that we're gonna try to break down like what kind of users we are and we're gonna look at some of the differences between each of them so let's start off with the MacBook Air so the MacBook Air compared to the other models like the 13 inch Pro and the Mac mini I mean it's pretty similar to the 13 inch Pro it has a similar body except it's lighter it's slightly thinner and it's got a fanless design also it doesn't have touch ID other than that it's pretty similar to the MacBook Pro 13 inch in that it even has the same ports on it it has only two Thunderbolt USB-C 4 ports and Apple has priced this at an entry-level price of about $1,000 USD. The MacBook Pro 13-inch, on the other hand, is slightly heavier, it's slightly thicker, albeit it's still very portable, small package uh, in and of itself, but it also comes with the touch bar up top and it also has a fan, which is supposed to help with somewhat sustained performance over time. And lastly, we have the Mac Mini, which is probably the most different of the bunch because it doesn't come with a screen. It comes in a desktop body, which is small, neat and kind of cute might I add. It also has much better I.O. offerings, which includes a gigabit Ethernet port, uh, HDMI port, two USB 4 slash Thunderbolt ports, and two USB-A ports, as well as a, hold on, headphone jack? Did I read that correctly? Yeah, what is, it, what is this, like 2013? And last but not least, it also houses a fan to help with cooling and sustained performance, all for a measly 700 bucks USD. Yeah, that's the cheapest. Okay, so now that we've quickly gone over some of the differences between the three, um, what are my thoughts on these three models and what do I like the best? As I mentioned, me personally, I've been using the MacBook Air for the longest and it has been absolutely like phenomenal for me, for my purposes. I've been able to edit video on it, do whatever I need to on it with spectacular battery life and in a package that is really small and portable. Who would have thought that in 2020, I would be able to say that I am going to replace my 16 inch tricked out, maxed out MacBook Pro with a base model like I like MacBook Air. Like, like that doesn't even make sense to me. So, I mean, that kind of spoils it right off the bat. I'll tell you right now, my favorite Mac out of all three of these is the MacBook Air. I absolutely love this thing. Firstly, like the whole touch bar, like I don't miss touch bar. Like I've had touch bar for the past several years and ever since it came out, maybe I just didn't give it much of a chance or invested in learning efficiencies with it. But I, to be honest, I actually prefer the hard button so much more, like just able to like slam down on like the volume key rather than, you know, having to find where it is and then like drag it while I'm on like a call or doing some editing or something like that. I'd much rather just prefer to just tap that button. It's also sleeker and lighter and it's just a joy to kind of just carry around and use on the go. It kind of feels similar to my iPad Pro 12.9 inch. I mean, it's almost the same weight with like when I pair my iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard. So I kind of get all of that, but also have the ability to use Pro software and Final Cut and all of that stuff in a small and neat package. So I actually really enjoy using the Air. Next up is the MacBook Pro 13 inch. And I'll be honest, I think this is 
kind of like a um, middle ground technically between the Mini and the Air. It's supposed to provide you a lot of power in a nice small convenient package, but I can't help but think that this is for somebody who has like really demanding uh, usage of their computer. And I personally don't fall in that category, even though I thought I did. Like my video and everything just cuts perfectly fine. My photos, editing, everything like that is perfectly fine on the air. So I don't think I'm any longer considered a pro for the MacBook Pro usage because I was just fine with the air. And last but not least is the mini. And I gotta say, this one was pleasantly surprising for me at how much I enjoyed this thing. This thing was a blast to use. I've always been, for the longest time I can remember, somebody who hasn't owned a desktop. Like it's always been a MacBook or a laptop and I would kind of just plug that into like an external monitor and use it in docked mode. Um, and that's pretty much always been the way I've used these things. However, this time I actually really quite enjoyed using an actual desktop setup. It was just surprisingly convenient and very nice to have something that was just always docked in and ready to go whenever I needed to. No more, you know, requirement of fiddling with cables or anything like that. Like when I would dock my MacBooks, like sometimes like this external monitor just wouldn't load and like I just wouldn't see a picture. I'd have to like open up the lid and kind of just unplug and play around with it, log in and then I'd plug it back in. Sometimes even have to restart the laptop. So None of that stuff, like you just come, press a button on the keyboard, mouse, whatever, and good to go. You're ready to rock. And a side note, there's no battery, so you don't gotta worry about keeping a laptop plugged in all the time, which will deteriorate your laptop battery. Okay, so those are our options. Now, out of these three, which one should you get? Which one should, like, which one am I getting? And what do I recommend? And to answer that question, we kinda gotta look at what our usage is like. So if you're somebody like me, who pretty much 70 to 80% of their editing and their work is done at a desktop, so if that's you, then I would really recommend just going the whole Mac mini route, like that thing is a killer for the price like for 700 bucks you're getting something that has you know really good cooling just like the macbook pro you're getting all the performance of the macbook pro and if not more actually according to some benchmarks but in a package that is almost twice as cheap like at 700 bucks versus 1300 bucks, you're pretty much saving like 50% almost. And this deal just becomes so much better if you already own a monitor, in which case the Mac mini is the way to go. Now, on the other hand, if you are somebody that needs that mobility and somebody that may be editing on the go sometimes, then I gotta say the air has been absolutely perfect for me. Uh, I am somebody who kind of just moves around the house quite a bit because I have a family of three kids and anytime my wife needs help or something like that, like I can't always be editing at the desk, which is why for me, the air has been perfect because I've been able to carry it around. It's nice and light, it's nice and portable, and I can just use it in the living room, kitchen, family, wherever uh, I need to do some work. So it's been really good for me which is why recommending the MacBook Pro is a little bit tough for me. It's a tough sell for me. You have the same um, you know, upgrade options or like the internal options compared to the MacBook Air. So if you did want a little more performance, you can still spec out a MacBook Air a little more and save money at the same time. And the fact that it comes in the exact same chassis, same body, same everything as the previous gen MacBook Pros, um, I mean, and that too with two IOs, like it doesn't even have more ports or anything like that, which could some someone could argue is more justifiable to get the Pro over the air. Uh, same amount of ports, same everything. So it's pretty much just the fan and the touch bar that comes to my mind. And the touch bar is something that I personally don't really care about as much. And the fan, as I mentioned, hasn't been an issue for me. Which is why, me personally, I'm gonna be recommending the MacBook Air over the Pro 13 for most use cases. And that brings me to the last question that I wanted to answer today, and that is, should you sell your Intel Macs? Now, this might be a hot take, or you may not agree with me, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below, why you do or you don't agree with me, but this, this new M1 chip is just so groundbreaking that I really think that the Intel Macs are just gonna get further and further and further compounded in terms of depreciation. Like, you're gonna get a lot less money for your MacBook Pros that are uh, Intel-based or even your like iMacs or whatnot. You're gonna get a lot less money as time goes on and more and more people realize that the M1 chip is just exactly what they need and more. And right now, there may not be a lot of people that wanna be early adopters for the whole M1 platform. So if you're willing to take that risk and you think that, you know what, I'm okay with this, I'm gonna take that risk, I'm gonna be an early adopter for the M1 chip, then 
get rid of your Intel Max because that thing is going to be a dinosaur in about a year's time. Macs generally have a much better resale value. So what my thinking process is, even if you were to get rid of the Intel Max right now, you're probably gonna get more money for your Mac before it depreciates a lot. And then let's say there's some pro models that come out with the M1 chip just a year down the road. You're still gonna be able to flip your M1 series Max for a much better price point because that's the future. That's what people are gonna want. Nobody's gonna want like, at least I believe your Intel Max like a year or two years down the road. But if you were to sell a base model Mac mini or a base model MacBook Air, very possible that somebody's gonna wanna pick that up about a year down the road uh, just to save a little bit of money. And you're gonna be able to flip that with the awesome resale value that Macs generally have uh, in third party markets. So at least that's my opinion on it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. And let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about these M1 Macs and if you guys are gonna be picking one up. Are you guys early adopters or do you wanna just wait and see and kind of just play out the whole scenario and see what people's thoughts are? I mean, there are still a bunch of downsides to these things. For example, there's people are daily figuring out different softwares that they use on their Intel Series Macs that are not compatible with the M1 chip. In any case, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, found it beneficial, helpful, and entertaining, if you like content around tech, gadgets, filmmaking, and lifestyle, make sure you guys go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Really appreciate your time. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.